He was actually the very last of these pre-Diluvian kings of one of these original five cities of Sumer. Deep in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, a group of archaeologists has made a spine-tingling discovery, an ancient tomb. This isn't just any tomb. It's thought to be the final resting place of the last Anunnaki king, a figure surrounded by myth and legend. Would it be fair to say that there's an element of a rediscovery of a yeah. technology from the past? I think it would be fair to say that, yes. But this tomb holds more than just old bones. It contains secrets so terrifying that those who found it are now gripped with fear. Who were the Anunnaki? And why are the people who uncovered this ancient secret now so frightened? Join us as we unravel the secret behind the mysterious tomb of the last Anunnaki king. King Gilgamesh's Uruk. The story of King Gilgamesh and the ancient city he ruled was captivating. If we could go back in time to around 2700 BCE, we would find ourselves in the busy center of Mesopotamian life during what's called the early dynastic period. It was a time when old tools and methods were being passed down from one generation to the next. People were moving into the area bringing new ideas and skills. This time in history was important because many city-states, which were like small countries, were starting to form all over Mesopotamia. These city-states were some of the first places where people lived in complex societies with many rules and systems. Right in the middle of all this action was Uruk, a grand city ruled by King Gilgamesh. But Gilgamesh was more than just a king he became a legendary figure. His life was so incredible that it's hard to tell what's real and what's myth. His story has been told again and again, mixing history with legend, making him one of the most famous figures of ancient times. Uruk was a standout among the ancient city-states of Sumer, located along the fertile banks of the Euphrates River in what we now call Iraq. This place often doesn't get the attention it deserves in the study of ancient history. A busy city center, filled with the sounds of crowded markets, the impressive sight of huge temple buildings, and the legendary Uruk Wall, which some say was built by the hero Gilgamesh himself. The city's layout was all about straight lines and neat shapes, showing that it was carefully planned and built. Building these structures took a lot of hard work and coordination. This old story tells us a lot about the people of Uruk. They weren't just people who got by, they were smart and inventive, always coming up with new ideas and building things to improve their lives. They didn't just live in their surroundings, they changed them to meet their needs. The buildings and city plans they made were so impressive that even today, people still admire what they did. The ruins of their city show us how great their work was. The fact that they could pull off such large projects shows they were very organized and worked well together. They probably had a strong leader who could inspire everyone and get the whole community to work together toward big goals. The tools and techniques they used might not seem impressive compared to today, but for their time, it was groundbreaking. It's not hard to believe that they might have used advanced methods or knowledge from other places. This shows that what we know about ancient technology is just a small part of a much bigger story. These early civilizations might have been more advanced than we think, using their resources and knowledge not just to survive, but to truly succeed. Uruk was no ordinary city. It was a giant in culture, business, and innovation. It gave us many firsts in human civilization, such as the creation of cuneiform writing, but the daily life under King Gilgamesh's rule was also amazing. A leader who wasn't just an ordinary man, he was almost seen as a god, believed to be key to the success and well-being of his people. Under his leadership, Uruk didn't just grow, it thrived into a major center for religious worship, especially for honoring Inanna, one of the top gods in the Sumerian religion. During Gilgamesh's time, Uruk was the height of Sumerian greatness in building, planning, and community life, filled with a large population. As king, Gilgamesh was in charge of everything in Uruk, 
from running the city and its religious festivals to military efforts to protect the city. His rule led to the construction of big projects that made the city more impressive and strengthened its defenses. These efforts ensured that Uruk stayed important in ancient history. Looking further into history, King Gilgamesh stands out as a fascinating mix of legend and reality, capturing the interest of both historians and archaeologists. The line between mythical hero and real figure often blurs, but archaeological finds strongly suggest that Gilgamesh was a real person in ancient Mesopotamia. Take the Sumerian king list, for example. It's more than just a simple record of history. It combines real events with myths and legends about gods and heroes, listing the rulers of Sumer and how long they ruled. What's interesting is that Gilgamesh, a well-known figure in ancient stories, appears in this list alongside other rulers. This shows that Gilgamesh might have been a real king and not just a character from a story. The fact that there are many versions of this list found in different places and from different times represents how important it was for the Sumerians to keep track of their rulers. Gilgamesh stands out as a key figure in their recorded history. Historical Footprints of Gilgamesh Finding a physical object, like an old tablet or a cylinder seal marked with Gilgamesh's name, is truly exciting. These items don't reveal everything about his life, but they show that people saw him as a strong leader. Spread out among ancient Sumerian ruins, these objects suggest that Gilgamesh wasn't just a made-up character from stories. He was a real and significant person in their society. However, trying to separate the historical Gilgamesh from the legendary hero is as challenging as untangling a tightly knotted rope. The evidence we have is incomplete, offering only glimpses of his life and rule. Instead of a complete picture, we're left with intriguing pieces that spark curiosity and leave many questions unanswered. This unfinished puzzle has made Gilgamesh a figure full of mystery. The lack of detailed records means we can't clearly say who he was or what he achieved. The clues we do have, like ancient writings and tablets, provide hints but they don't fill in all the gaps. As a result, scholars continue to argue about how much of his legend is based on truth and how much has been exaggerated over time. Whether he was as strong and wise as the epic stories say, or if these tales have been stretched over the centuries, is another topic entirely. But the interest in Gilgamesh goes far beyond his historical presence. What makes him truly fascinating is what he represents about the world and the people who shared his story. Through Gilgamesh, we get a glimpse of the values and beliefs of ancient Mesopotamian culture, where rulers were seen as larger-than-life heroes, essential for the survival and success of their people. The history of Gilgamesh, written on clay tablets in the cuneiform script, was first found by 19th-century archaeologists in the ruins of Nineveh's Grand Library. Although some parts of the story are lost forever, what remains showcases the lively imagination and enduring spirit of ancient civilizations. Written around 2000 BCE, but based on even older Sumerian poems, the epic mixes history and legend. It portrays Gilgamesh as a part god, part human figure, famous for his strength and bravery, far exceeding other men and even other heroes of his time. His story is filled with daring adventures, like his journey to the cedar forest to fight the fearsome monster, Humbaba. But it's the death of his dear friend, Enkidu, that sends Gilgamesh on a more personal quest, to find eternal life and escape the harsh truth of mortality. The friendship between Gilgamesh and Enkidu is at the center of the epic. Enkidu, a wild man made by the gods from clay, was meant to humble Gilgamesh's overwhelming pride. Over time, the two became inseparable, with their bond changing both of them. This deep friendship reveals important truths about human connection and self-discovery. Through his relationship with Enkidu, Gilgamesh learns that even the strongest among us cannot escape the natural cycle of life and death. 
At its heart, the history of Gilgamesh deals with universal themes, the desire for eternal glory, the fear of death, and the understanding that mortality is a part of life. But Gilgamesh's story goes beyond his struggles. It explores the relationships between humans and gods in ancient Mesopotamian culture. For example, Gilgamesh's quest for immortality leads him to Utnapishtim, the only man given eternal life by the gods after surviving a great flood. This moment isn't just about Gilgamesh trying to avoid death. It shows how the gods in Mesopotamian myth had great power over life and death itself. Throughout the story, we see how gods and humans are linked in Mesopotamian stories. Enkidu was created by a goddess to become Gilgamesh's companion. And when Gilgamesh turns down the advances of Ishtar, the goddess of love and war, she sends the bull of heaven to destroy in revenge. Then there's the terrifying Humbaba, guardian of the cedar forest, placed there by the god Enlil. Gilgamesh's battle with Humbaba isn't just a test of strength. It's a deeper look at human ambition clashing with the will of the gods. As we sift through the tales of Gilgamesh, we begin to uncover the person behind the legend. He was a man who, despite his godlike strength and heroic deeds, struggled with the same fears and questions that all humans do, especially the search for meaning in a world ruled by both fate and divine powers. The mix of history and myth in his story continues to fascinate us, offering us a window into the values, hopes, and fears of a long-lost civilization. The Gods of Ancient Mesopotamia In the Epic of Gilgamesh, the gods are always present, observing and often interfering in human lives. They don't just sit back, they actively shape events, creating beings like Enkidu and sending down heavenly bulls to challenge heroes. The ancient Mesopotamians believed that their destinies were heavily influenced by the desires and whims of these powerful deities. This constant interplay between divine influence and human aspirations forms a central theme of the epic, reflecting how people of that era viewed their existence as being intricately linked to the will of the gods. These tales, rich with magical elements, offer us a glimpse into how the ancient Sumerians understood their world. It was a realm where humans and gods frequently interacted, often leaving people grappling with their place in a universe governed by such formidable forces. Gilgamesh, the hero of the story, frequently seeks the wisdom of Shamash, the sun god, who appears to take a personal interest in guiding heroes on Earth. The god's involvement is evident, especially through Gilgamesh's mother, Ninsen. Even though she is not one of the most powerful goddesses, she steps in to assist her son, illustrating the blurred lines between ordinary people and their divine counterparts. As we delve deeper into ancient Mesopotamian myths, we encounter the Anunnaki, a group of gods often mentioned in Sumerian and Akkadian legends. These deities hold a special status, though their significance may not be immediately clear to us today. Over time, they became associated with celestial bodies like planets and stars, linking their divine nature to the heavens. The Anunnaki represented the Sun, Moon, and Venus, emphasizing the importance of these celestial entities and suggesting a profound connection between divine actions and cosmic events. After catastrophic events, people tended to split into two groups, those who were fortunate enough to survive and those who anticipated disaster and prepared for it. This raises the intriguing possibility that some individuals might have foreseen these calamities. Ideas about major events on Earth abound, such as the Nibiru catastrophe theory and Randall Carlson's theories about recurring disasters. Both concepts attempt to fill in the gaps in our understanding of historical calamities. The Nibiru catastrophe theory suggests the existence of a wandering planet called Nibiru, which allegedly passes through our solar system every 3,600 years, bringing chaos due to its strong gravitational pull. 
This theory often references ancient texts to support its claims of significant changes caused by this celestial visitor. In contrast, Randall Carlson grounds his ideas in geological and astronomical evidence. He argues that natural disasters like comet impacts, volcanic eruptions, and ice ages have shaped our planet throughout history. Carlson, a self-taught expert on rocks who has a passion for ancient tales, believes these natural events have been instrumental in transforming the Earth over time. While the Nibiru theory posits that turmoil arises from an imaginary planet, it's worth considering whether there might be a genuine link between Earth's disasters and this so-called Nibiru. There must be a reason behind the dramatic climate changes we observe. The name Nibiru, rooted in ancient stories, not only connects us to how early civilizations viewed the stars, but also prompts reflection on their understanding of the universe around them. The intertwining of divine beings with human lives, as seen in Shamash's guidance and Ninsen's support, demonstrates how closely ancient peoples perceived their gods to be involved in their daily existence. These tales, brimming with divine intervention and cosmic drama, illustrate a world where the earthly and the celestial were deeply intertwined. Over time, Anunnaki's role evolved from direct intervention in human affairs to being represented as celestial symbols, signaling a shift in how societies viewed the gods' influence. This transition from active participation in human life to symbolic celestial representations reveals a cultural evolution in the ancient world's perception of divine power. When examining survival after disasters, the distinction between the lucky and the prepared sheds light on the resilience and foresight of ancient cultures. The ability to recognize and prepare for potential calamities shows the observational skills and strategic planning that defined these societies. The exploration of theories like Nibiru's cataclysmic returns or Carlson's insights into natural disasters encourages us to consider how we interpret historical indicators in our ongoing quest to understand the natural world and our place within it. As we discuss these concepts, we not only gain insights into ancient narratives, but also find ourselves more connected to humanity's enduring desire to comprehend the unpredictable and often tumultuous natural environment. Looking back at ancient Sumer, it seems that they were continuously seeking wisdom from their past. Today, many believe that our technology and knowledge surpass those of our ancestors. Yet, Nibiru, linked to the Babylonian god Marduk, held significant meaning in terms of power, divinity, and cosmic order. This connection underscores Nibiru's critical role in Babylonian religious texts and its profound impact on astronomy and calendars. In the beliefs of ancient Babylonians, Nibiru was not merely another star. It represented the zenith of the sun's journey, marking the exact location of the summer solstice. This heavenly marker was essential, influencing their calendar, which dictated when to sow crops and celebrate religious festivals. Babylonian astronomers depended heavily on their understanding of Nibiru's position to determine the optimal times for agriculture and to honor their deities, demonstrating how celestial observations were crucial to the daily lives and futures of ancient civilizations. Origin of the Nibiru Mystery the stories of Nibiru in Mesopotamian tales and Phaethon in Greek myths interest us because they show how ancient societies handled the mysteries of the universe. Phaethon, linked to Helios, the sun god, was believed to drive the sun's chariot across the sky. In 1976, Zechariah Sitchin published The Twelfth Planet, a book that combines old stories, space science, and ideas about life from other planets into an exciting but debated story. Central to Sitchin's story is Nibiru, a mysterious planet he claims orbits our solar system every 3,600 years. This idea comes from his reading of old Sumerian clay tablets, which he says mention this planet as the twelfth member of our solar system, counting the sun and moon. Sitchin often emphasizes connecting old myths with modern space findings, 
suggesting that our ancestors had deep space knowledge that could equal or even surpass what we know today. However, his ideas, especially those linking space events to alien actions, face skepticism from scientists. Scientists ask for more solid proof instead of assumptions from old writings. The ongoing interest in linking ancient texts and space events shows a blend of longing for the past and curiosity about space. It shows our continuous fascination with discovering a bigger story among the stars, where humans aren't just living on Earth, but are active players in a vast cosmic drama. Whether these links are true or just products of our imagination, they add to a story that keeps intriguing and sometimes confusing those who try to understand our place in the universe. This story isn't just about knowledge, it's about finding where we fit. It taps into a deep human desire to feel connected to something greater than ourselves, to believe that our ancestors knew about a universe full of wonders that we are just beginning to explore again. Through myths of gods like Marduk and sky events like Nibiru, Ancient societies shaped a view that combined their daily lives with the movements of the stars. In stories from ancient Mesopotamia to Babylon, we see an interesting mix of divine and cosmic themes. People weren't just looking at the stars, they were deeply connected to them, almost as if they were interacting personally with the universe. It wasn't just about using stars practically for things like farming or navigation. It was about understanding their role in a universe filled with gods and powerful forces that controlled everything from the sun's rising to the changing seasons. As we study history and interpret ancient writings, we're reminded that our quest to map the skies and understand celestial signs is an ancient effort. It's fascinated humans for thousands of years, from the plains of Mesopotamia to today's modern observatories exploring deep space. Each discovery and every idea, no matter how strange, brings us closer to those early sky watchers who first mapped the stars with wonder and respect, seeking answers in the night sky. Sitchin's theory centers around the Anunnaki, an advanced group of aliens from a distant planet called Nibiru. According to his ideas, they came to Earth around 450,000 years ago, not just as visitors, but as creators who genetically changed early humans to help in their gold mining operations, which were crucial for their home planet's survival. Sitchin claims that the ancient Sumerians learned advanced astronomy, like the path of Nibiru, from these alien ancestors. His theory of Nibiru's return every 3,600 years is based on his understanding of how the Sumerians measured time and understood space cycles. Despite lacking wide scientific support, the idea of Nibiru has captured the imagination of many. Some make wild guesses, linking Nibiru to disasters on Earth, suggesting that its gravitational pull could send comets and asteroids toward us, possibly causing massive destruction. Around 13,000 years ago, a series of important events caught Sitchin's attention in his stories. He makes interesting connections between his ideas and those of Emanuel Velikovsky, who, in the 1950s, wrote about worlds in collision. Both thinkers studied ancient texts, interpreting them as records of huge cosmic events that shaped early human history and the stories around it. Velikovsky focused on collisions between space bodies in our solar system, while Sitchin expanded his view to include the Anunnaki and their mysterious home, Nibiru. Although their ideas differ from mainstream scientific beliefs, they suggest an interesting idea. Ancient stories might contain deep truths about our universe and origins that go beyond what is commonly understood. We are faced with a choice between ancient myths and pieces of scientific evidence suggesting that Earth has experienced significant cosmic impacts in the past. As the Mayan Long Count calendar approached its end in December 2012, there was widespread talk about the potential end of the world. There were rumors about Nibiru, a mysterious and unseen planet supposedly heading toward Earth for a collision. This led to discussions that mixed ancient prophecies 
modern conspiracy theories, and astronomical guesses, capturing global interest with the idea that an apocalypse could be near. Beyond these myths, there may be clues linking ancient knowledge of the stars to major changes in our planet's history. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. Deep in the sands of Mesopotamia, a group of scientists uncovered a hidden tomb said to belong to the last Anunnaki king. As they descended into the dark chamber, a cold air surrounded them, thick with ancient mysteries. The glow of their flashlights revealed detailed carvings showing celestial battles and otherworldly beings. At the center of the tomb lay a massive sarcophagus, decorated with jewels that sparkled like stars. As the lead archaeologist, Dr. Elena Reyes, approached, a strange fear gripped her. Whispers echoed through the chamber, an uneasy reminder that this was no ordinary burial site. Legends of the Anunnaki spoke of their return, and she felt their gaze upon her. With shaking hands, she brushed away the dust and opened the sarcophagus. Inside lay a mummified figure, royal and imposing, yet eerily lifelike. Suddenly, the room shook, and the walls began to move as if the tomb itself were waking up. Panic seized the team as they realized they had stirred something far more powerful than just history. What secrets could this ancient tomb reveal about the Anunnaki's mysterious legacy? Let us know your answer in the comments section. The Presence of Nibiru The idea that Nibiru might exist and be dangerous to us mixes old beliefs with current worries. It's interesting how stories passed down over time, written on old stones and tablets, can blend with modern rumors on the internet, causing a lot of fear. Scholars like Sitchin and others believe it, even though there's no scientific proof. They see ancient stories not just as tales, but as records of real history, suggesting they contain information about past events that affected our planet. If this idea is true, it means our history books might need changes. It suggests that our past isn't just about events on Earth, but also involves visitors from outer space who have influenced our development. This idea sparks our imagination, making us think about the vastness of the universe and our place in it. Whether or not you believe in it, this idea certainly inspires fascinating stories. Back in 2012, when people were worried about the world ending because of a hidden planet, it wasn't just fear that spread. There was also a sense of wonder and a desire to understand the universe and our place in it. This story grabbed people's attention not just because it was scary, but because it connected them to something bigger, something beyond their everyday experiences. People are talking about a mysterious planet called Nibiru. They say it's a planet that our top astronomers can't see, but a few people claim they have spotted it. The rumor is that Nibiru might either crash into Earth or get so close that its gravity could cause big problems for us. NASA the major space agency that usually ignores these doomsday stories, decided to speak up about this one. NASA made it very clear that there is no proof that Nibiru exists. They said there are no space threats we should be worried about. If such a huge planet were heading our way, all the scientists and even amateur stargazers who watch the sky every night would have seen it by now. NASA has some really powerful tools, like the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, to search space. They've used these tools and haven't found anything that looks like this so-called Nibiru. So, according to NASA, there's no need to worry about this mysterious planet. Randall Carlson is a self-taught geologist who's fascinated by the big disasters that have changed our planet over and over again. He spent years studying Earth's rocks and layers, finding proof of huge, sudden changes, like quick climate shifts massive floods, and comet impacts. His work shows a clear picture of Earth's chaotic past and how these big events have affected human societies. The intriguing question that has come up is whether the mysterious planet Nibiru is real and if it might be connected to this pattern of disasters. 
Some people wonder if its long, stretched-out orbit could match up with these catastrophic times, possibly causing them by dragging comets or other space debris our way. However, most scientists think these big events are just part of Earth's natural cycles and known space activities. Major asteroid impacts, huge volcanic eruptions, and shifts between ice ages are all seen as natural parts of Earth's history, not caused by some hidden planet. The ongoing debate between fringe ideas like Nibiru and serious scientific research into Earth's major changes shows how fascinated we are by the idea of cosmic disasters. It highlights our deep curiosity about the powerful forces that have shaped and continue to affect our world. One side of this debate dives into myths and uncertain science, while the other side works hard with proven methods in geology and astronomy to truly understand our world. These two approaches show our endless search to figure out the big, sometimes disastrous events in Earth's history and the vast activities in space. Part of the reason is the excitement of thinking about cosmic dangers. When someone makes a scary prediction, like the planet Nibiru crashing into Earth, it grabs people's attention. These stories draw people in, even without real proof, because they tap into a basic human curiosity about what lies beyond our planet. This curiosity isn't just about fear, it's also about wonder and the endless possibilities of what might be out there in the universe. At the same time, this interest in potential space disasters can make people more aware of the real science-based threats we face, like climate change and environmental destruction happening right here and now. In a way, these wild space disaster theories might help by getting more people to think about Earth's environment, even if the initial reason is a bit far-fetched. The difference between what we know for sure and what we can only guess about gives us a lot to talk about when it comes to our place in the universe and the real dangers we should be ready for. While NASA and other science organizations work hard to explain the facts and sort out what's true from what's made up, the discussion itself, powered by both serious research and wild ideas, keeps people interested. It's a mix of creating myths and careful scientific study, both adding to our ongoing story about Earth and its place in the universe. This conversation not only helps us understand more, but also keeps the sense of mystery and excitement about the universe and our role in it alive. What do you think about the shocking discovery of the last Anunnaki king inside a tomb? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section.